So here we are in this beautiful dashboard in Excel, but what is quite cool is that you have these selection boxes. So I can click on Ed Sheeran. I can see all of these charts change depending on who I pick. And if I go to sponsor, I can choose these, or if I want to clear the filters, I can do that, or I can drag across and see all the data based on all of these things. So my name is David and I'm and I have tons of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Tech of the Workplace, I'm covering on my channel. So let's get started. So to start off, we need some pivot tables. So first I'm going to select my data and then press these three dots and this one and more options always show, perfect. And then I can go to insert pivot table and I'm just gonna press okay with the default. I'm going to click on city and sales. I have 170,000 for Bangkok, for example. And let me just show you what that is. If I go to raw data and I Add some filters, control shift L and go to city to be Bangkok, like that, press OK. And then I can select these sales numbers and it's showing me 170,000. So that is the same number, which is what I've got here. So that's what a pivot table does essentially, is it adds together numbers and then breaks them down by category. Here we have some, but we could also, if we wanted to do averages or percent of totals, etc. I have a whole other video where I go deep into pivot tables for beginners. So check that out if this is something you wanna know more about. But for now, let's go to the next step, which is creating a chart. So here, if I go to select my data and I can go to insert, and I'm going to choose a column chart like this. It's going to be this one here. And next, I'm going to have the interactive part, which is the slicer. So if I go to uh, right click on city and I choose add a slicer, I'm going to right click on singer and also add a slicer. So move these around a little bit. A city is going to allow me to say Bangkok is only going to filter for Bangkok. Phnom Penh is only going to filter for Phnom Penh. Not very useful, really, if you have the same field in both the slicer and the chart. But where it becomes really useful is if you have a different field in it. So here I have Singer, for example. I can choose Katy Perry, and it will show me only that, which I pick. So that is kind of what a slicer does. By the way, you can format these charts. You can right-click and choose Sort from Largest to Smallest, something that you can only do with a pivot chart. You can't do this with a regular chart. And then if I click on different options, it will reorder these according to how the sorting works. So now I've got these two things. I can also do right click on dates and choose add as timeline. So a timeline is kind of like a slicer, but works more for dates. So I get this drop down. I can choose quarters and I can click on that and extend it. Here I have only one year. If I had multiple years, it would show me over here as well. So um, to get from this to this dashboard, as hard as it is to believe, it only takes some copy and paste pretty much and redoing what we've already done. So let me prove that to you. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to copy it and then I'm going to paste it. I'm gonna do this the wrong time here and you'll see why, but let me do it a few of the right times like this. Always better to do it horizontally and leave some gap in between. Now, why is it wrong? If I, for example, remove this filter, let's say I wanted to do something else with the pivot table, it's going to tell me it can't expand. So in the second one, I'm not going to do city, I'm going to do country and also sales. And then the next one, I'm going to click on here and I'm going to do singer by say Facebook likes. Then in the next one, I'm going to do date. So instead of city, I'm gonna do date. You can choose any of these measures and these categories as you choose. And with date, it will automatically group it by month. Uh, and then this one, I'm going to do a multi-tiered one. So I'm going to do city and country. Uh, but I'm going to drag in country on top of city. So there we go. Now it's doing it hierarchical. And here I'm going to do, um, say, country and singer by copying and pasting this into here. And I'm going to drag country into columns. And I'm going to add, say, sponsor into rows. So it looks like this, like this kind of matrix. I'm going to build charts out of all of these next. So for this one, since I've got two different values, I'm going to choose this donut chart. I never use those with three or more, only ever with two. Then this other one by Singer, I'm going to choose a horizontal bar chart. This one is dates and dates work really well with line charts. So I'm gonna choose a line chart. This one, I'm going, it's hierarchical. So I'm also going to choose this kind of bar chart and look how it 
does it hierarchically. It puts Cambodia and these three cities and then Thailand and that one city. Then this one, I'm going to do a horizontal bar chart, but a stacked one like this. So now that we've got that and we've got our slices, if I click on this slicer, you'll notice that this will actually affect multiple charts at the same time, which is pretty nice. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to take all of our objects and copy and paste them into a completely new page. So click on one and press control A. That will actually select every object in your sheet. If you click on a cell and press control A, you'll know that does differently, but object control A, really, really handy as well. Now I'm going to right click and cut and then add in a new sheet and I'm going to paste control V. So now I have all my elements. Uh, I do want to rearrange them. So here it says total, that's completely useless. Delete that. I don't like these gray buttons, so I tend to hide all field buttons on the chart and rename this because total doesn't really help with anything. And I'm gonna do this to all the charts and then clean it up and then we'll see how it looks. And over here I've done it and I've chosen to put the country chart on the top left. And that is because the human eye will always look first at the top left and look last at the bottom right. So your slices, selection boxes, timelines, best to be over here. By the way, if you've got a slicer, you can change the columns, you can change other dimensions as well here. Uh, just a couple of things, you can control select different aspects and you can go to often align top. I think this is super important to do. Get them all aligned and then if you want them the same height, so I can go to format and the height is 7.22. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste. There we go. And now they're going to be exactly the same. Note that you can control select to hold multiple. This is clear. Or you can click this to deselect, select multiple. Or you can also click and drag and that will select or deselect multiple as well. This one doesn't make sense to filter this one at all because this is the city, so it's not adding any value. And equally, the singer one should not filter the by singer. It doesn't add any value. So what we should do is find a way to remove that link. So there's two ways to remove the link. Firstly, if you click on this chart, you can go to Analyze and you can choose Filter Connections. And then I'm going to say that this should not be linked to the singer one. Note that it does tell you the sheet name, sheet 11. Press OK, and now this one will not filter this chart up here. Now, what about the other way around? So you can actually click a slicer and go to slicer and go to report connections, which pivot tables are associated with that. The ones I constructed before this video have nice names, so I know exactly what they do, but the ones I've made in this video don't. So I do recommend renaming your pivot tables. To do that, if you go into your pivot tables, you click on it, you go to pivot table analyze, and here you give it a name. So this is sales by city and country like that and now if i go over here and i go to slicer and report connections and then if i go to this one here sales by city and by country i can just unlink that and now it will not filter this one right next to it um, a couple of finishing touches i have also in this case removed the numbers abc one two three there's also no formula bar, as you may have noticed. And I also started my presentation like this, where you see the minimum amount that you need to for it. So to get to those kind of views, if I go back in here, what you can do is Control Shift F1 will toggle that, or without the shortcut, you can click here and Modern Options and one of these. You might not be able to see this. You might just see these straight away, depending which version you have of Excel, but you can still get to the same options. And in the View tab, you can tick or untick the formula bar, and then headings is sheet by sheet, like that. Great. So if you've enjoyed this video, then consider giving it a like. My name is David Benheim, and I have tons of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Tech of the Workplace, I'm covering on my channel. And I release weekly videos on this kind of stuff. Thanks for watching.